You're listening to episode number 92. Welcome to the Inner Singer Podcast. Providing you with tools and techniques that you need to accelerate your singing, your performance, and your inner game beyond what you thought was possible. And now, your host for the Inner Singer Podcast, Mike Goodrich. Hey everybody, Mike Goodrich here. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Inner Singer Podcast and joining me today. I'm thrilled to be here. Today, I want to jump right in, and I want to talk about the power of consistency. Now, that may ordinarily sound like kind of a boring topic, but I'm going to tell you why it's one of the most important things that singers can be, is consistent. And all great singers are very consistent, and all great athletes are consistent. Anybody who does anything very, very well and wants to succeed at anything has to be consistent. They have to do it on a regular, predictable basis. So, you know, I was recently listening to an interview on a podcast with the coach of the Yankees, the ex-coach of the Yankees. His name is Dana Cavalea, and he was talking about the Yankees and two of the most famous players he's ever ever worked with um, are in the Hall of Fame. And they are way up there in the Hall of Fame, like the top guys in baseball. And he coached both of them. And he said, you know, the best players don't necessarily show up first at the ballpark and leave last. Oftentimes, they'll show up last and leave first. But the time that they are there is very predictable in terms of what they do. And they're very consistent with it. And he made another observation that I have found to be true as well. When you look at somebody that's highly successful, no matter what they're doing, right? If they're, uh, we'll take singing, obviously, because I'm talking about singing. You know, they're backstage. What they do backstage in preparation for being either in a recording session or performing live is not that exciting. As a matter of fact, it's a heck of a lot of work. Now, we get to hear the recording or see the actual show, but we don't see the work that goes into it behind the scenes. And behind the scenes is a lot of boring, consistent, meticulous stuff that they have to do to be able to present themselves on stage in a way that makes everybody get real, real excited. So the backstage is sometimes just not that exciting. It's just necessary. So we have to do it. And the best way to do it is be very, very consistent with a routine that you come up with that works for you. And there is a lot of uh, science on this now. And let's just take singing for an example. Obviously, let's say you're going to practice singing five days a week. You're going to do it Monday through Friday, and you've got 15 minutes each day. Well, 15 minutes each day uh, for five days is an hour and 15 minutes, right? Now, you are much better off doing every day for 15 minutes than you would be doing one day for an hour and 15 minutes. And they've proven this scientifically. You'd be much better doing a gentle upward spiral of progress every day than a long session with a week in between. So that's one important thing about consistency. It doesn't have to be for an hour or two hours a day, so don't overwhelm yourself. Just set something that you know you can do, that you know you're going to do, something realistic, every day for 10 or 15 minutes, every other day for 10 or 15 minutes, every other day for a half hour, whatever it is, but figure out a way to be consistent with it and then stick with it. Now, I know what a lot of people are thinking, And I probably would have thought the same thing. Yeah, Mike, that's easy for you to say, but you kind of know what you're doing with your voice. I'm all over the place. You know, I don't know what's right, what's wrong. How can I be consistent if I'm doing it wrong? And that's a valid point. My answer to that is, if you're consistent with something and it's wrong, you're going to find out fast. And I'm a real firm believer in fail fast. You know, if you're doing something that you're doing incorrectly, you don't want to wait a year, two years, five years to find out that it was wrong because you're only doing it once a week or randomly singing in your car. You want to like commit to it, do it on a consistent basis and find out in a week or two, hey, this isn't working, you know, or this, this hurts or this is messing up my voice or this is making me hoarse or I feel like I'm worse than I was two weeks ago. You know, you want to find out fast. So consistency will help you do that. Even if you're wrong, you're going to find out you're wrong fast, and you're going to be able to self-correct. You're going to find a way to, to fix it. You're going to gather information. 
the faster I start and the more consistent I am, the faster I'm going to find out if what I'm doing is working. And if I find out it isn't, I can do something else. And then if I find out that isn't, I can do something else until I find somebody to help me, a course, a person, whatever, that gets me on the right track. But if I'm doing something wrong, I want to find out fast. I don't want to do it for a long time. And you proceed with caution. You're smart. You know, you're not going to be doing something that's going to thrash your voice. You're just going to be doing something, if it's not quite right, that's just not going to feel quite right. I assume you're not just going to be yelling and screaming. I assume you probably actually want to get your voice going in a strong, healthy way. So I don't think you're going to be misunderstanding me. You want to find something that works, and you want to find it fast. And you want to find whatever doesn't work, find it fast as well. But consistency is the key. So the other thing with consistency is there are going to be times when you don't want to do it. There just are. We're, it's human nature. We're, we're just not going to want to do things sometimes. My advice to you is to have a strategy for when you don't feel like doing what you know you should do. And that strategy could be as easy as just deciding that when you don't feel like doing it, you're just going to have a gentle conversation with yourself. And you're going to say, I know you don't feel like doing it, but we're going to do a little anyway. I know, I know, I know you really don't feel like you have time, you don't want to do it, you don't feel like singing, but we're just going to do a little. And you want to follow through on that and rehearse that strategy. So what you want to do is mentally rehearse what you're going to do when you don't feel like doing. You're practicing, you're singing. If you mentally rehearse it, when it comes up in real life, you're going to have a way to deal with it. And you will have trained yourself already. When I don't feel like singing, when I don't feel like being consistent and doing what I'm supposed to do, I know what to do now. I'm going to say, okay, I know you don't feel like doing it. We're just going to do a couple of minutes. Because if you are creating a habit, let's say you've never been consistent with your singing, or as consistent as I'm talking about. Let's say you've sung in the car and you've called it singing. Let's say you've sung, but not really done any warming up and not really any general conditioning and vocalizing. And let's say you've done nothing on purpose, you know, deliberately to work on a specific part of your voice. You've just been kind of doing the best you can, right? So you've never been consistent at the pro level. You've never been consistent in the way I'm talking about. You're not used to it. That's fine. You know, you got to give yourself that. So on those days when you don't feel like doing it, you talk to yourself gently and just do it for a minute, two minutes. There's been a lot of research on habits and developing a consistent habit. The amount of time you do it every day or every other day or whatever schedule you put yourself on is nowhere near as important as just doing it. So let's say that you've made a plan and a goal. I'm going to vocalize 15 minutes a day, three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And I'm going to kind of see where that gets me. And you do it Monday, you do it Wednesday, Friday rolls along, and it's like, I don't feel like doing this. And you say, okay, I know. I know you don't feel like doing it, but you're just going to, I'm just going to do it for a few minutes. Rather than saying, okay, I'm going to gut it out and do it for 15 minutes and hate every second, just say, you know what, I know you don't feel like doing it, this is to yourself, but just do it for one minute. Just set a timer on your phone, do it for one minute. Just keep the golden thread going. Keep the discipline going, keep the consistency going. If you do that, that's a victory. If you do that, the brain gets a dopamine release because you did what you said you were going to do. That is a win, that's a victory. The more you do that, the length of time starts increasing because now you're in the habit. The habit is now becoming a habit. The brain finally understands after a while that this person seems to want to do this on these days for this amount of time. Let's just make it a habit so he doesn't have to think about it anymore. She doesn't have to think about it anymore. And all of a sudden, boom, it is like not needing to set an alarm clock anymore because you just happen to wake up at six o'clock in the morning because it's a habit now, right? You've been doing it so often. So this becomes a habit. And the amount of time you do it to develop that habit matters infinitely less than the fact that you stick with the habit. So if you establish the consistency, you can just do it for a minute. If you say, you know what, I don't think I can commit to 15 minutes three times a week. Do it for a minute on Monday, a minute on Wednesday, a minute on Friday, and do that for 30 days. 
And you're going to find that, you know what, I bet I can increase that to five minutes. Do that for 30 days. You know, I bet I can increase that to 10, 15 minutes. The next thing you know, 30, 60, 90 days later, you have developed a great habit of consistency that's going to really take you to the next level in your voice. That would be my suggestion about being consistent and developing the habit of consistency. The main thing is, however you do it, stay the course. Stay consistent. Keep going. The only people that don't make it are the ones that give up. The ball is really in your court. The ball is in all of our courts, right? Because the information is out there. Even if you're not singing the way you want to sing now, the information is there. There's a tremendous amount of information on voice. There's a lot of bad information too, but there's a tremendous amount of good information. The faster you start and the more consistent you are, the faster you're going to find the good that was really going to help you go to the next level. To that end, you can grab my free book, Fearless Singing. That would be the first thing that I recommend you do. Why? Because it's a really great book. You can read it in less than an hour. It comes with a ton of different bonuses and videos and all kinds of things. It's free. You download it. Uh, just click the link in the bottom of this page, wherever you happen to be. I'm not sure wherever you're listening to this. Wherever podcasts are running, there will be a link in this description. Click the link, go grab the book. Like I say, it's great. It'll show you how to be a fearless singer. It'll show you how to sing dangerously. By dangerously, I don't mean stupidly, but sing dangerously. I mean, who wants to sing in a boring way? Do you want to hear a boring singer? I don't. Do you want to sing boring? I don't. I want to sing exciting. I want it to be exciting to me. I want it to be exciting to the audience. The great singers that we all love sing dangerously. They take risks. They take chances. Not with their vocal health, necessarily. I'm not saying that. What I'm talking about in Fearless Singing are the three pillars that you can build a fantastic singing voice and career on. One without the other two, not going to be so great. Two without the other one, you're still not going to be so great, right? You need all three. And nobody's really talking about this. So go grab the book. I've been talking about this since 2008. I was about the first one and any voice teacher that I know that was talking about anything like this. But go get the book. You will really, really enjoy it. The link is in the description. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have any suggestions for any episodes you'd like to see or anybody you'd like me to talk to or interview, let me know. And uh, I'm going to sign off for now. Thanks so much. I'll see you soon. Grab the book. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Inner Singer Podcast. And please share this with all of your singing friends. And head on over to iTunes and subscribe. And if you found it of value, give us a nice rating. Thanks so much.